Okay, hi. Welcome back again to 19th and 20th century philosophy. Today we're talking about Edmund Husserl. Husserl was a German philosopher, um, born in 1859, so 11 years after Frege, born the same year as John Dewey and 30 years before Martin Heidegger. Um, 1859 is also the same year that both On Liberty by Mill and Mill um, and uh, Darwin's Origin of the Species were published. So 1859 was a pretty big year. Um, Husserl died in, in 1938, um, 10 years after retiring. Now, Husserl is often regarded as the grandfather or founder of continental philosophy. Certainly, he was the founder of the tradition of phenomenology, um, uh, which became an important part of the continental tradition. Um, uh, but like Frege before him, probably better to think him of, of him as a progenitor rather than a practitioner of that tradition. Now, um, Husserl was trained in mathematics and psychology. Um, uh, his early work, again, much like Frege's, was on logic, the foundations of mathematics, and the theory of meaning. Um, Husserl's very earliest work um, focused on the foundations of mathematics, particularly on the concept of number and on the nature of arithmetic and arithmetic knowledge. Now, Husserl tried to ground uh, this in psychology, right? So at the beginning of his career, he was a follower of, um, of uh, his mentor Brentano's psychologism. But by 1900, Husserl had given this up and had become one of the strongest proponents of anti-psychologism. Uh, now, some interpreters have, have thought that this was due in large part to Frege's critique of Husserl's views. In their correspondence, they, had, they wrote letters to each other in the early 1890s, um, as well as uh, Frege published a review in 1894 of Husserl's first book, uh, The Philosophy of Arithmetic. But other interpreters have more recently argued that Husserl started to independently recognize the problems with psychologism in little known writings from 1891 to come to um, some of the key ideas that he shares with Frege earlier than we had previously thought. So after this point, Husserl's first major work was the logical investigations, um, the first part of which is a major attack on psychologism, um, the later parts of which he lays out his views um, and his method of phenomenology um, in the context of trying to understand the nature of logic. Um, like Frege, Husserl's investigations of logic and mathematics lead him into considerations of the nature of meaning. And many have said that Husserl took over Frege's distinction between sense and reference, sin and bedeutung, uh, directly. But again, more recent comment uh, commentators and interpreters have pointed towards this 1891 essay by, by Husserl, um, which is earlier than Frege's discussion of sense and reference by about a year. Um, and the fact that Husserl sent that essay to Frege as part of their correspondence is evidence that maybe Husserl arrived at the distinction earlier, or even that Husserl may have influenced Frege's thinking. Now, whichever way the influence goes, it's certain that these were um, that there, there were these significant similarities and interactions between these two thinkers. Um, I think that's key. And just as a as another side note, if if Frege is a progenitor of analytic philosophy and Husserl of continental philosophy, what does it say about the supposed analytic continental divide? that their interests were so close to one another and that they actively engaged ideas. That's worth thinking about. Now, um, Husserl never gave up on Brentano's dream of making philosophy into a rigorous science. This is something that Husserl took away from Brentano. Um, though Husserl gave up on psychology as a method for doing this, so instead, Husserl came up with a new approach, phenomenology, to do the job. Um, and he thought this was going to be the key to turning philosophy into a strict science. Now, giving a full account of what phenomenology is and how it works and its history would be a whole course, right? But I think it's helpful to think about the differences between psychology 
as a as an approach to philosophical questions and Husserl's phenomenology. So both are concerned in some way with with consciousness, with the mind, or with experience, um, especially the the sort of um, psychology of, of Husserl's time. Um, but phenomenology is purely a first person method. Psychology is at least partly third person. It, it looks at um, it looks at uh, the mind from the point of view of, of behavior and, and uh, from an objective standpoint. Um, psychology is empirical, right? Uh, experimental, but phenomenology is a priori, right? It's not only first person, but it doesn't depend on the content of any particular experience. Um, and while psychology is concerned with the study of concrete mental activities unfolding in time, um, phenomenology is concerned with, with universal essences, essences of consciousness. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning, uh, given, given that uh, we're, we're talking so much about the relationship between Husserl and Frege, Husserl's phenomenology involves an expansion of the theory of meaning that Husserl shares with Frege from just language, right? So um, whether, whether he's talking about natural languages like German or English or constructed languages like logic and mathematics, Frege is focused on the meaning of language, the meaning of expressions in a language. Um, Husserl is interested in that, but also expands his focus to include um, the, the meaning of any kind of conscious experience or, or act, right? So he's also interested in um, the meaning of perceptual experiences, for example. So the structure of consciousness for Husserl is, is what he calls intentional. It has intentionality. It means it represents something as being a certain way. It stands for something, right? Um, not only does it refer to something outside of itself, right? It also has a, a sense or content. So he, he uses that two-dimensional picture of meaning to talk about experience. Like now, and it's also worth saying, like Frege, this further content is not a mental picture. It's, a, it's another kind of objective thing that Husserl uh, sometimes calls the noema, right? Um, the noema is, is a lot like the Phrygian sin or sense. Um, and uh, it, you know, and then in different parts of, of Husserl's career, he thinks of this more Platonistically, right? Uh, or a more um, in, a, in a Kantian transcendental way. Um, although that's, that's a very complicated story. Now for Frege and Husserl both, I think there are puzzles about the relation between the expression or the intentional act, its sense or sin or noema, and its referent or the object it indicates. Right? Does the word or the experience determine both its content and its denotation? Or is the content of the of the word or phrase um, or the experience somehow involved in determining what the denotation of that thing is, what the reference of that thing is. So there's a set of, of puzzles there for um, uh, Frege and Husserl to solve and also for their interpreters to try to understand. Now you've read Husserl's expression and meaning, right, part of it, which I hope gives you a good sense both of the continuity with Frege as well as what is distinctive about Husserl's early phenomenological method. Um, there's a lot more to say about this, and so I look forward to discussing it with you, but that gives a sort of introduction to some of the key ideas um, and some of the background here of Husserl and, and his relationship to, to Frege. So thanks for, thanks for joining me. Uh, I look forward to discussing with you, and uh, I'll see you next time.